Hello everyone, this short video will walk you through how to create a knowledge article in ServiceNow. If you go into ServiceNow and you're on your home page when you log in, on the left you'll see the list of menus here and you'll find one now that is called Knowledge Base. If you click on that, it will identify several things that you can do in the Knowledge Base system. I'm just going to go over these really quick um, so that you're familiar with them. Uh, you can create a news article that we, can be shared with everybody in DTS or can be shared with the public. It's just generally a, an article or something that notifies people of events that are taking place. You can look at all published articles, a list of all published articles, and kind of filter through those if you would like. You can then look at the feedback on those published articles. You can access the knowledge home base by clicking on the view here. And under submissions, you can create a knowledge article by clicking on this link right here. When you click on this link, it'll take you to the knowledge home page. Now, in order to create a knowledge article, the very first thing that you need to be aware of is that you need to have the knowledge role. So many of you will go out there and try to create a knowledge article and you won't even be able to see this knowledge base menu. And that's because you don't have the knowledge role. If you want the knowledge role, you need to submit a request to the Capital Help Desk requesting to have the knowledge role in ServiceNow. There is no additional cost for that for your, your group, so you, it just has to go through an approval process. So this is typically the look of the knowledge article, as you can see right here. What you'll see at the top is you'll see the submission number. The submission number is important because you cannot edit a knowledge article once it's been published, but you have, so you have to go back in to the original submission and edit that if you want to make any changes. So the submission number is important. You can keep track of that through writing it down or uh, after the knowledge article is published you can see the submission article number inside that knowledge article. The next item down is the topic. As you can see under the topic you have a red asterisk right here. This means it's mandatory to fill out or select a topic from the drop-down menu. A topic is important because this is how knowledge articles are organized on the knowledge home page. It's optional to select a category or a subcategory in this case to the topic that you selected. And so you can select one if you would like if you have one in there. If you don't see the topic that you want to organize your knowledge article under, you can again submit a request to the Capital Help Desk to have a topic added. Next you'll see down here <clears throat> that the article is um, being submitted and you cannot change this, so it's subdued. Next down you'll see the attachment link. The attachment link is important because if you click on this, any attachment that you have uh, added to this knowledge article, when you go to the knowledge home page and you click on that knowledge article, it will automatically open up the attachment that you have added. If you click on display attachments, what will happen is as you add any attachments to this article and you're on the knowledge home page, when you click on the knowledge article, it will open up into this view that you have right here or the knowledge article view and then you can access any attachments that have been added at that point. Knowledge articles can be attached or linked to a parent such as a, an incident, a request, a change, a problem, a requisition, any other parent that has been identified in ServiceNow. You must add a short description as you can see again by this asterisk right here. You must add a short description. This information is displayed on the knowledge homepage next to each knowledge article. So I'm just going to type in a little short description here. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to show you the meta tag field right here. Eventually there will get a lot of knowledge articles in service now and it may be hard to find the one that you're looking for. By putting in a meta tag uh, information such as I'll type in the word password here, when I go to search I can search for the meta tag password and it will bring back all articles that are related or have the word password inside of them and then that way it can narrow your search. If you're going look over to the right now you'll see that 
This article hasn't been requ uh, requested yet, but when you click Submit for Approval, that will change. It's automatically assigned to the person that's creating the article. And when that person is put in here, their assignment group is associated with that person. But you actually have to put in the assignment group. Again, you can see that it's mandatory here. And then you can select from a list of people that are in that group. You can change this, but that's up to you. It, what, if you change this, then it will change the manager that is going to publish this article. You just need to be aware of that. Right here you have the knowledge article. When the knowledge article has been published, it will uh, create a knowledge number, and that knowledge number will be placed in this field right here. And the next two items you have is the valid to date and the review date. The valid to date is automatically set for one year from the date of creation. It can't be set to greater than one year, but it can be set to less than one year. And the review date, the date which you must review this article for content and validity is set to one half of the valid to date. So in this case, if it was set for one year, the you would have to review it in six months. An email would be sent to um, you, the creator, or the manager, and asking you to review this article for content and validity. You can, again, reduce the valid to date or the review date less than what's um, automatically posted here and that's up to you, but you cannot extend the valid to greater than one year. The next thing you see here is who it was submitted by, so that captures who has uh, created this article and submitted it for review. Up to the, the right, you will see that you can save this article, and if you save this article, you will remain here on this page. Basically, this is here so that if you want to save it and then come back to it later and, and add more content, you can without losing your, your information. If you click Submit, it will also save the article, but it will take you to a list of submissions that are still open uh, at that point. So it does basically the same thing it saves, but it just takes you to a list. If you submit for approval, then this article will be sent, an email will be sent to your manager, and that person will then be able to review the article and publish it. And again, over here you have uh, your ability to attach uh, documents to this knowledge article. So next I would like to come over here to the body where the uh, the text will be at or the, the body of the content for the knowledge article and that's in this area right here. We've uh, had it default so it has symptom, cause, and resolution but if that's not what you want to display you can simply get rid of that, delete it out of there and add whatever you want to in this section. Um, and so that pretty much is how it works. The menu the list of menu options here, everything works well on this. I wanted to point out that you can insert a video into the knowledge content here, but if you do that, you have to convert your video to a .mov format first so that it can be viewed in ServiceNow. A better way that you might want to do that if you're going to attach a video is to come up here to the, the attachment paper clip and attach the video as an attachment and then from there you would come over here and click display attachments or attachment link. If you clicked attachment link it would automatically open up the video and start playing it if you clicked on that knowledge article from the home page. And so that is pretty much how to create a knowledge article in ServiceNow. It's pretty simple. You can put whatever content you want here in the middle and you can add uh, images, links, and any other text that you want into here. Thank you. You have a great day.